my powers, I will show you where they go. You like the wind, I tell you where it goes. Clean as you go, clean as you go, clean as you go. Before I started my sketchbook challenge, I had gone out and did a field trip where I was just driving around and stopping and sketching different places. Um, this was back in June of 23. And actually I started that sketchbook challenge like the very next day, <laughs> unbelievably. Um, but I had stopped at this restaurant in Ormond Beach and I got a, um, a nice table right on the river and while I was waiting on my meal to come, I met a, a lovely uh, young lady and her mom, and they were very interested in what I was doing, and so I showed them my book. So a part of that experience, uh, they followed me on Instagram. They were curious about my work, and so I shared. And uh, after she was following me, the mom followed me on Instagram. She reached out and asked me if I would, if I would do, I guess, a commission really. She wanted this image. So that's what I'm doing today. So I'm going back and I'm using my, my image that I painted in my sketchbook, which was really a super fast uh, little image. And then um, I pulled my reference photos from that day as well. And I did a, a quick, painting, just checking out my um, paper that I'm considering using, and I guess I will be using, and this is a quick draft that I had done of that that painting. So because I just wanted to test my materials. I wouldn't call myself a watercolor artist specifically, um, but I know how to paint in watercolor. And so I'm a little intimidated by true watercolor paper, even though I have some, and I've painted on it before, but I often use mixed media paper. But I thought for a real commission, I thought I should use real watercolor paper. And so that's what I did. And this is actually stuck to the back of uh, the paper I use, which is Arches paper. I think I bought this pad, actually it says Mary White. so. This was the pad she had us um, use, which is cold pressed watercolor paper, arches. I usually like hot press myself because I don't like a whole lot of texture, but I'm going to say, I'm going to stay true to the art form today as I start working on this commission piece. And yeah, this, that was my trial test that I worked on. The, the clouds got a little muddy, but I don't think it's horrible. It was a partially cloudy day with some blue sky peeking through, and that's kind of what I wanted to convey. So I'm going to do a slightly larger version of this, but I wanted to test out before I did. So that's what we're doing today. So in addition to basically sharing a demo today, I also want to kind of go over some of my best tips um, or things to think about when you're working on a landscape painting. And the very first thing is always when you're starting out, think about your big shapes and go wet into wet. That's what I did here. I started off with my sky and my, my larger shapes in the background moving forward, um, everything very wet, wet into wet. I often use really large brushes like a large flat or a, a large filbert or um, maybe a mop brush, anything that's really large that will hold a lot of water so that you can just be very loose in those initial dealing with the larger shapes. Another important rule that you want to acknowledge and utilize is light to dark. Always start off with your colors very light, 
and then slowly working towards the dark. Usually this rule applies. I'm not saying it's an always sort of a rule, but it's definitely a rule you want to keep in mind. And I often use that rule because especially when it comes to landscapes, starting off with the sky, you're usually going light unless you've got a really, really dark day. But for the most part, that rule applies. third rule I want to talk about is utilizing planning and all the times that you have practiced and actually doing a rough draft as a method to alleviate fears, especially if you're doing something like this where you're doing uh, a commission piece. There's a lot of fear that comes with that. I know I certainly felt that and even though I did all those steps, um, I also had to practice a little bit of positive self-talk as another method to alleviate my fears. Another element that I often consider is my color temperature. Now your color temperature can set the mood of your painting. Often though, like in this situation, I'm basically just going off of the mood and the feeling and the atmosphere of the time and location and the season and the place that I'm in, which in Florida, it's just usually green. But maybe you wanna consider a seasonal approach. If you're, if you're trying to go for a particular mood or a feeling, you might wanna go for something darker, stormier, um, or you could just go based off of your reference like I did in this situation but it can affect the overall feeling if you're trying to achieve a particular feeling or a mood in a painting. Another thing that I always contemplate is having my focal point, a place where um, I want my viewer to be drawn into the actual image and you'll see in this particular painting I actually use the the river itself um, the the perspective of the river as it moves away from the viewer and that actually points you to my actual focal point in this particular painting which is this cluster of trees along the shore on the far left side so Sometimes these things work out even when you're not paying attention because maybe, I know in my case, I feel like I've done this enough to where maybe these things just happen now. My intuition is to look for them and it wasn't until I actually sat down and started thinking about these elements that I wanted to share with you, some of the things to think about, that I realized I had actually done that. I had, I had used elements to pull the viewer and guide them into my painting into a particular place where I really wanted them to look and pay attention. And that leads into another element that's related, which is the edges. Your edges can be nice and sharp where you have the focal point. Um, those sharper edges also pull your viewer in. And then elements that are further away can be softer and less detailed so that your viewer also is attracted to, to the edges and to the detail and the focal point. All those elements help you tell your story. Now you may be wondering how I do my decision making when it comes to really detailed areas. And that is just basically using a rule of simplification. When you have a particular area, especially your focal point, 
you want to identify what the most important things are or what elements you want to share the most. In this particular instance, my eye was drawn to, especially to the branch, the, the tree that was leaning over the water, creating the shadows, the larger longleaf pines, and then the palm tree, which I felt like really gave an element of really making it look like someplace like Florida. And then everything else was basically simplified. I just concentrated on forms at that point. And that leads to our largest topic, which is your overall composition. Composition is something that you kind of really learn over time. You can actually even study books that talk about composition. But the most simplest thing to think about when dealing with composition is that at a bare minimum, the way your layout is created and the overall focal points and all those elements that guide, they all are something that can be learned over time. And I feel like that's definitely what I've done. But there are books that help you with composition and doing small thumbnail studies is another great way to improve your ability to do good compositions, especially landscapes. So I'm gonna wrap up today's video, guys, right here. I'm just gonna show you the last few minutes of me taking up the tape and uh, basically showing you what the painting looks like in the final moments. Um, of course, I still had to sign it and then I packaged it up and I sent it off to the individual who um, actually commissioned this painting. And I, I appreciate the opportunity so much. I certainly learned a lot and I was glad that I got to have the opportunity to share it with all of you. Okay guys, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that something was valuable. I know some people had asked me for a landscape uh, tutorial, so I hope that this meets that needs. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And um, don't, forget, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like if you liked it, comment, um, ring the bell if you're future, for future notifications. And if nothing else, guys, if you made it this far, leave me an emoji and I will see you next time. All right, guys, have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye. You are my powers, I will show you where they go. You like the way.